Welcome to another episode on how LoRa works with Shelly, where we discuss how to use LoRa to communicate between Shelly devices that are outside the Wi-Fi range. And in the last video, I was, you know, playing around with these virtual components and buttons and stuff, and I got a little bit carried away and I thought, let's just, uh, you know, do one more scenario, which is almost the same as the previous one, but again, it's slightly different. So on the previous video, I created a button that I press, it's going to trigger this output on the remote device and it's going to send a short pass like you're opening a gate. But uh, you can also create a button like that you can turn on and off. So let's just use that to send that information over so we can operate at a relay on the, on the remote device. So for example, again, it's like uh, if you have some garden lights and you want to control them and you know, it's just too far away, there's no uh, chance reaching that over Wi-Fi. So you can do it with LoRa as well. So let me just uh, show you how it works. Um, so I'm going to operate this output here. So as you can see, the garden light is off. So I'm, oh, oh, sorry, wrong screen. So I'm clicking the button here and now it's on. And as you can see on the, on the other Shelly, uh, the, you know, the output turns on. And now if I turn it off here, then it also turns off on the other Shelly. So again, this is my uh, low, uh, Shelly 1 um, Gen 4, which is the sender. So that's the one which is on the Wi-Fi network and it's going to get uh, the, uh, you know, information from the Shelly app where you, you, where you can press this button. And then uh, the 2 p.m. Gen 4, that's the receiver, that's, which is going to be far away outside of Wi-Fi range. And the reason I'm pushing these, um, um, you know, virtual components, because uh, with this way, you won't be able to, you, you don't need to sacrifice a physical, you know, button on, let's say, or any other Shelly device, you can, you can use it for something else, but that also means that you won't be able to control these from a physical button. Uh, you have to use your app in order, or maybe like a display uh, in order to, um, you know, press these virtual buttons. But uh, I think we will look at an example how you can use a physical button as well. So first, before we start looking at any code, what we need to do is we need to uh, see how this virtual component is created. So you go on the on the device, which is going to be on the Wi-Fi network. So let's say the gateway or the sender device, you go into the components and I created a new uh, user defined component. So previously I created a button and now we are created a Boolean, which is uh, basically like, you know, like an on off um, value. And I called it the garden light and I set this to a toggle. So basically just, you know, to push button toggle. And it has uh, two states on or off or off or on. And that's just getting displayed on the screen. And uh, I haven't really changed anything. You can customize the icons. I, I haven't do that. So this is why it appears with this default icon and you can see the text on and off here. And then once I have done that, I also assign it to the uh, virtual group. Again, I described in the previous video why I created the groups because I can manage these devices better in the app if they are assigned to a group. So if you are creating a new device you, and if you already have a group, then you can just edit the group and add the new device to the group. And again, just like uh, in the previous example, when we created a button, uh, it had an ID assigned to it, button colon 200. This uh, light switch is now, ha or virtual light switch, now has an ID which uh, says Boolean colon 200. So we will need that because once we go into the script, we um, need to remember this ID. So let's go to the script. And I'm still using the same script that I created for the previous examples. And I've already explained pretty much the whole thing on the um, uh, on this script. And last time we created event handlers in order to capture when this virtual button got pressed. So this is the piece of code that is uh, responsible for this virtual button, if you remember. The way Shelly works is that for switch, we are not going to get an event, but we are going to get a status update. So we need a separate piece of code, which is the um, status handler, uh, which is again, very similar to the previous one. Um, but instead of events, it just sends status updates and the structure is slightly different. And if you uncomment this line and then you execute it yourself, you will see what is the 
how these status messages are sent out and there would be loads of status messages not related to the um, you know the virtual button being pressed but other you know system status messages so we definitely have to start uh, you know filtering out the ones that we need so in the oops in the status message which gets sent whenever i press this virtual button it has an attribute which is called the component so the status.component and that equals to the id of this button so boolean colon 200 and then also in this uh, status message there is going to be a delta uh, object and it would have a value uh, which is the new state of the button so it will say delta value equals true if the a virtual button just or the virtual switch got turned on and it's going to be uh, you know value equals false when it's turned off i'm not really sure if this is going to be the final version of the code because uh, um, i mean i think once uh, you know the component is boolean then the message would definitely contain a delta value uh, field so i don't have to check separately uh, but i'm not sure about that so you know i don't know if it's possible for you know shelly to send a status message uh, for this virtual switch which is not a you know like a delta change so I might need to add some additional code here to handle those scenarios. I mean, worst case scenario, the script is just going to fail. Uh, so it's not, I mean, it's not nice, but uh, it's not going to do you any harm. Unfortunately, there is a lot of documentation on Shelly, like, you know, the status handlers, but all the, you know, the, the possible status messages are not documented anywhere. So all I can do is, uh, you know, put this stuff into debugging and check a couple of messages. I won't be able to potentially check everything. Um, so that's that that's my own caveat for myself so anyway if the status the data dot value is uh, true which means that the switch got turned on then we are going to send a LoRa message which is going to be bo and then we also put something into the console which says garden light on message send and if it's not true but false then we send a LoRa message bf and then we also print a message to the console log. And the reason I'm doing this BO and the BF, because again, I explained in a previous video that I thought that, um, you know, every time I send a LoRa message, I'm go the first character or the first letter of the message is going to indicate what we are doing. So the, you know, the gate example was the first example. So that's A, uh, this light example is the second example. So that's B because you need a way to distinguish these messages on the other end. And I thought I'm just going to do this structured way of, uh, you know, the first letter is indicates the function and then the second letter is going to indicate the action. So O is for on, F is for off. So that should turn on the garden light and that should turn off the garden light. And that's it. And that's the end of the status handler. And um, maybe in the future, we will add some more status handlers for the other uh, examples, or maybe they would need to be added to the event handler. We'll see in the future. Let's see the receiver script. Um, again, here I'm just modifying the existing script that we started working on in the previous videos. And again, here I ha even had to do even you know smaller changes because uh, this is the, oops, sorry. This is the piece of code that I added for the uh, gate opening. So, you know, it checks if the message is AO, then it, you know, turns on the first relay. And now we are checking if the, uh, the message starts with the letter B. So we know that that's uh, related to the garden light. And then we check whether the second letter is O. And then we are going to switch on the second relay. So you can see Shelly call switch.set. So we are going to, um, change the state of a switch so one of the outputs and id1 so this is the second output uh, id0 is the first output and we are going to turn it uh, on equals true and if the the lora message the second character is f then we do the same uh, you know switch id1 and the open is false so it's going to turn off and that's it i mean uh, we are not going to you know, put any other messages, but we have some, you know, logging up here from the previous example. So I think it's fine that we don't do anything else. 
if I scroll, so both of the scripts are running at the moment. So if I scroll down and I clear the console, so now I'm going to use my phone in order to uh, turn on this garden light. Uh, you can see there is the second one which says garden light. So I'm just going to operate that one. Okay, so uh, let's look at both of the consoles. So I'm going to turn it on now and you can see that on the uh, on the sender side it says garden light uh, on message sent and then we receive some message on the other side and actually I should change screens as well because hopefully you will believe me that now oops this LED has turned on so this is the second output and if I do the whole thing again so I click on the button again on my phone you can see on the sender that uh, the garden light off message sent another message received here and then the relay output has turned off and that's pretty much it so now we are able to control this uh, you know second relay which is well sort of the second shelly that's the one which is you know far away outside the wi-fi range and we are just using the lora communication you know between these two units you know using these lora antennas uh, to in order to send messages and then this guy whenever it sends the message it would just uh, you know for this particular message it's going to toggle the output or turn them on and off so that's pretty much it i think it was fairly easy to do uh, because it was just a small modification from the previous example but again that's also a valid scenario that we want to be able to control things that need to be turned on and off as opposed to the previous example where it's it only needs to send a pulse uh, like you would send it to a gate motor or a garage motor as usual the link to this example is going to be down in the video description also if you want to buy any of the products there is going to be affiliated links down in the video description below but that's all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next example